All right, guys, welcome to day 86 of Onshade. We have here an interesting feature I just wanted to showcase for some high-end development, and that is a feature called Edit in Context. So let's let's look at this. So when I was making this basketball camera mount, something that me and a couple engineering students were working on, we had a problem, and that problem was our servo that we were using was a step file and you can't pull a step file into a part assembly, at least we couldn't figure it out. What we could do, however, was pull that into an assembly and then use what's called edit in context. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit the body of ge some geometry in context to other geometry. So let's check it out. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go to a new design file. All I've got is the same step file imported and I have a blank part studio. So let's go ahead and click on sketch. Let's um, turn on our origin planes again so we can see things a little bit better. Let's go home, let's do sketch, top plane, and let's just draw a rectangle. Now, this rectangle probably doesn't have to be anything specific. Let's do five inches by three inches. Just something for us to build upon. Shift E for extrude and bring that up a quarter inch. So we'll do 0 0.25, okay? Now let's go over to our assembly and let's insert this part studio right here as a bottom plate of our camera mount. If we were to insert our servo as it is right now, it would insert all these individual parts. We don't want that. So instead, we're gonna go back to our servo and we're gonna create this as a sub assembly. So I'm gonna highlight all of the, my parts to my step file for my servo, hit composite part, click okay, green check mark, and then let's name that composite part as servo. All right, things look good so far. When I go to my assembly file now, and I were to insert that composite part, we can see servo as an option here. So we click on servo, we pull it in, hit the green check mark, and now this is acting as one complete sub-assembly. We don't have to do those individual mates. Really cuts down on our time. So let's do uh, fasten mate. Let's go to the center of our servo. Let's do the center of this plate. Let's just go ahead and join those in. Looks good. And then I'm going to go ahead and take part one and fix it. Make sure it doesn't move. Okay. Now, instead of going back and forth on our plate to our servo, looking at measurements, we can do edit in context. This is just like, mwah, so cool. I'm going to right click, do edit in context. All right, notice where I am at. It sent me back to the part studio, but we can see this a servo is part of a in-context geometry. You might be able to connect the dots where we're going here. So let's click on sketch. Let's click on this top plane. Let's hit in for normal view. And let's use U for project. And what we're able to do is we're able to project other geometry onto this geometry. And I just think this is such a smooth feature. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab the outside edge of all of my servo. Looks good, looks good, looks good. We're just clicking on those very outside edges. And here's what I can see so far. So it's exact dimension of my servo. So depending on how good your 3D printer is, you might need to adjust for tolerance. We're gonna go ahead and hit the green check mark and watch this. I'm going to hit Shift E for extrude. And we're going to extrude up to face. And this is where I was like, this is super cool. I was able to zoom in and choose the bottom of that servo as the face it would extrude to. So notice here, we didn't have to measure a single thing. Everything is put in context with one another. And so whatever geometry is here is automatically being referenced. Super cool. Hit the green check mark. 
and I want you to notice now our sketches have these little arrows next to them and that is to reference the context of what they're talking about. So we have context to and these are references as far as like if you want to go back and, and try to make sure you got multiple contexts and multiple edits in context you can see which one's which kind of a little bit of a file name tracing but we see in our assembly we were able to create a cavity that fits our servo mount. It looks great. Next thing we need to do is to do this one more time. So I'm going to right click, let's hit edit in context, create a new one for just for to showcase that you can create a new one. And then I'm going to create a sketch on this top plane. Right click, hit view normal too. And I want to create a body that is flush with, so let's do R for rectangle, and I'm going to zoom in, zoom, 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 a body that is slightly outside our servo, looks great, green check mark, and now we're able to do another extrusion, so shift E, up to face, and I want it to be flush with the top of that servo right there. You can slide, do a little bit of a slider action here. That way you go from the opacity of 0 to 100% for your servo. You can see what's going on. But overall, we can kind of see that this extrusion, let's check out the right view, will be flush with the top of that servo mount. Hit the green check mark, and what you know, We've got clearance space to add in our screws. We've got a flush mount, and it looks good to go. Now you can kind of see how I created this material right here. You can do it with other things. So the servo we used specifically had um, the mount attached to it as well. So we went ahead and added that mount in there. So you can do edit in context to multiple geometries. But I just thought this was wicked cool, and I wanted to show it to you guys. If you've got any questions, comments, concerns, throw them down in the comment section. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. And we will see you in the next video. Take care.